I'll just bring you in a bit of an update video, uh, second time doing this video. I tried to make the last video uh, fairly quick, but sound like I was going to have a heart attack while I was shooting the video, trying to talk so quick. So I try and slow things down a little bit and just try to show you a little bit more. Might be a couple of minutes longer than the last one I tried to do. Um, as I've probably left you with the last one, depending on which order you're watching the videos in, um, spindle motor, uh, or spindle motor, spindle housing, um, sitting up on the machine now. I think you've already seen that. Um, there is a little bit on my Instagram as well. Uh, it was finished up to this point here, and I did talk about that when I was uh, had the spindle pulled apart. So the actual spindle shaft came back to about here, and these are the parts that actually bolt on after that. So I did mention that it'd be twice as long again. Uh, this is all to do with the draw system to for the draw tube to work through the hollow bore. So that's the open and close the, the chuck jaws. If you're sort of wondering what that means, just taking around for a quick look at the front, nothing really big deal, but. This is the actual draw tube here, so this is the actual chuck mounts onto here and you've got a central system that runs through the centre. So this is the opening and closing of your jaws as this moves in and out, it closes your jaws and that's operated through a hollow tube that goes through the bore, which I'll take you down quickly and show you, but it's probably not, not a lot you can see in there. But if you understand how CNC's work, you'll know that, how that works. Um, encoder up on top here, anything that's, uh, you can see that's black uh, has been sandblasted and painted just to give it a, a fairly tidy appearance. Uh, strip everything down as I have of everything. Uh, I didn't do anything inside the encoder. There's just uh, a very small support bearing at the rear of it. There's two main support bearings to carry the load of this pulley, uh, which I did replace. Uh, as mentioned, I've already sandblasted and painted anything that's black. Uh, replace the belt here, tooth belt. It didn't need to be replaced. It was a bit of a line on there, just do it type of thing. Uh, V-belts have been replaced. Uh, spindle motor you've already seen down the bottom there. Uh, some of the parts I've left are left raw. Obviously, this is a drive area. Uh, same thing with the pulley, but I did, I did blast and uh, paint that. I got a bit carried away there, but there is a bit of an exposed area there. But uh, the what doesn't need to be painted will obviously wear off, but uh, with the tooth belt, I didn't bother painting that. I've just cleaned those two up. Uh, this is the retaining nut for the actual bearings that go into the uh how can i say in, in short term there's there was two bearings at the back here so this is the locking nut to pre-tension that um, set of bearings that were in the um, previous video when i was pulling the spindle apart uh sandblasted and painted this uh, this is just a mount here nothing too much there i've had this uh this whole unit disassembled um, mostly to see if there's any wear and tear and to give it a good clean uh, plastics and things like that have all been cleaned uh, aluminium has been uh, washed as well, so I have a special um, solvent for cleaning aluminium, especially for aluminium. Uh, just bringing you down to the end now, the two sensors on top here, if you wonder what those were uh, for the brains of the machine to know what's going on. Um, basically, if they're not connected, it does throw an alarm pretty much instantly. Just bringing you down to the end, this is the actuator um, I suppose tube, I suppose you could say, um, when I was talking about an uh, actuator, if, if you guys are following along, I don't know much of if you, what um, parts of my videos you guys watch, I know some of you skim through, so there's probably not a lot, you miss a lot of information, but um, this is the activation tube, so this moves in and out, which uh, that threaded um, part of the shaft, <laughs> make sure you get it out, uh, the threaded part of that shaft sticking out the other end, is where the um, jaws activate from. So this is the draw section here. So it's hydraulically driven. A couple of hydraulic lines up on the side are coming in still. Uh, these wires still got to be connected into a small box on the side here. So it's just adding things on. So these are all being cleaned. Uh, probably a bit pedantic, but these were just a little bit oil and, and dust dirty. So I've gave those a good wash. And same thing with the box on the side there. Um, Oil tank's probably the next thing to probably go back in, or hydraulic oil tank down the bottom here, which I've talked about a fair few times. Uh, spindle motor has been, uh, spindle motor, the uh, servo motor for the ZXS has been mounted back on. Um, I blasted and uh, repainted the mount. Uh, there's one down the other end there for the support bearing down the other end. I just bl blasted that and painted that in my traditional black just to make it easier. The, this colour's a bit more stuffing around. The black is a single pack and the, the, this creamy colour is um, a two pack, so it is a bit more mucking. I'm going to you know, set it up in a spray gun to spray it. 
So I've got that bolted back on because it's fairly heavy to lift in. You sort of got to stand in here to lift that in position. That probably weighs, I don't know, probably a good. You can see the physical size of it compared to my hand, so you can get a bit of a gauge. I didn't weigh it, obviously, but it was heavy to lift in there. So I'm glad I did that before I put the hydraulic tank back in. And as of my previous video, um, I did fix this up. So I did remove the drive again. I've seen that cover, how crap it looked at the top there, how pedantic I am. I couldn't leave it alone. Uh, I did fix that um, area there that was sticking up the top there that looked a bit crap, so I fixed that up. Um, pretty much as much as I can show you, this section sticking out the back here, just adding things on as I'm going, is for the drain line for the coolant. And just sort of show you inside this unit, I'm trying to remember what I showed you in the last video and with the new version. Um, this is the drain line for the coolant, so there's a hose that goes on here back to this point, so that drains back to the tank, so it works its way back down to the tank down through there to the coolant tank in the centre of the machine. Uh, there is another hose here, so this is the return line from the actuator for the uh, to pull your jaws open and close on your automatic chuck or hydraulic chuck or whatever you want, however you want to refer to them. So as it uh, actuates, it uh, drains some of the um, the oil away. And that returns back to the hydraulic tank, which is what I'll take you in and show you quickly. I try to do short videos, but even this has already been running for six minutes. <laughs> um, hydraulic tank, um, had it sandblasted, as with everything, uh, same, uh, same way I approach everything, uh, sandblasted. Um, just a little note for you guys, if you're getting anything powder coated, don't just get things blasted and powder coated straight over the raw metal. Um, there is a, a primer that is available, well, I don't know sure of your part of the world, but in my part of the world, the company who manufactures pretty much 90% of the powder coat that we use in our part of the world is Dulux, and they have a, a primer, so it gets blasted. Uh, it's basically like a uh, powder coat, but it, it primes the surface, so it's a, a rust barrier, and then you powder coat over the top. So to give you an idea of price, uh, Powder coat, I don't know about your part of the world, as I say, keep referring to, but I'm not too sure, but powder coat's generally not too bad for price. Uh, to get this uh, tank uh, blasted, uh, primed and powder coated and a couple of other small parts uh, was $150, just to give you an idea of figures of how much I'm paying to get things done. Um, probably not important for you guys, but just to give you, um, just as I say, gives you an idea of how much I'm sort of spending on you know, restoring the machine. I'm sort of counting it as I go. I'll just pop the lid off and give you a quick look inside. Um, didn't have to really, but I just wanted to show you inside. Um, the main point was to uh, keep this, I don't know if you've watched some of my earlier videos, this was a grey colour, which is a lot of the parts on the uh, Mazak internal parts are grey. There's like a, like a navy grey, I suppose you could say. And the paint was um, coming off the outside, as you can imagine, it's a fairly old machine now. Uh, powder coated in a light colour for a couple of reasons. Obviously, it's a bit more appealing to look at, and obviously, you can see any. This is the return tank, so this is your hydraulic oil in here to, to uh, any hydraulic drive unit. Well, oh, so how can I get it right? Uh, um, anything hydraulically driven is driven from this area, so this is only the one hydraulic unit that runs the whole machine. So, all your hydraulic oil is stored in here. Uh, not that you would take the lid off very often, but you can obviously see with the clear, with the clean or brighter colour or lighter colour, I suppose would be a better way to describe it, you can see any debris that's coming back through your oil line would get deposited here, so that it gets deposited here and then drawn back up for a filter and goes back through the unit again. So it is filtered, but you can see if there's anything washing back through the unit, uh, coming back through your lines, and, and there probably will be a little bit when I reassemble the machine. Just bring you over to one of the last things, just showing you a bit of progress, probably some things I could probably skip over and you might anyway. Um, this is the transformer box, so there's obviously there's a transformer underneath, so I've had this same thing with the cream colour, um, blasted, um, pr um, primed and colour coded. Um, the base, uh, the steel base there, or the frame there to, to hold the transformer up, I've just blasted and painted that myself. I was obviously a bit of a, in a bit of a panic stage where I wanted to get something actually to look at like I'm doing something, and I just sort of stuff it. I'll just do that myself. You can see a little bit of green below in the bottom of the screen there, which is the original colour. So this is the coolant tank, which will get done last. Uh, that, that the uh, plastic on there is not to cover it up, this is just a bit of packing plastic just to sit there from packing things up. Uh, this is all the stuff that wrap up the powder coated items in, so I get all this bubble wrap back that I keep for uh, for you, you know, for use for packing up things in future. If you're wondering what that is, there's a bit of a curiosity questions things. 
and the ZX is um, servo uh, servo um, uh, ball screw servo uh, ball screw mount there as I say so you probably couldn't see it far away I really show, worry about showing you but I've just blasted and uh, painted that myself uh, just to make it a bit more appealing uh, linear as you already know under those covers there just keep it covered up until I get the linear back on there or the, the slide back on there but that'll probably do for this video even though I was going to try and make this a short video it still took me 10 minutes but um, that'll do until I can think of something else and I'll bring you back for the next one okay bye for now